video that I promised you it's everything you need to know about sunscreen now um, I originally was gonna do a top 10 um, sunscreens video like I did with my lip balms which I will link here if you haven't watched but uh, as I was doing research for that video I discovered so many new things about sunscreen that I didn't know that I thought it would be more informative and helpful to do this video so today I'm gonna be telling you a lot of facts about sunscreen that I did not know and uh, I will also tell you what I use and what I like and you might agree with some of those choices you might disagree with some of those choices after this video uh, but yeah I hope you guys find this helpful okay number one let's talk about SPF what is SPF have you guys ever asked yourself this question we always look for a sunblock with SPF 50 30 etc SPF basically stands for sun protection factor and the biggest myth about SPF is the higher the SPF the better the sunblock now that is not true. Uh, this is something that even I learned while I was researching for this video. Basically anything between 30 to 50 SPF is pretty good. Anything above 50 SPF, actually there aren't enough studies to prove that that's even effective. And in a lot of countries, they've even banned people putting anything above 50 SPF on the sunblock bottles because there aren't enough studies to prove that it really you know, helps. So when you read 70 SPF or things like that, you really um, need to start thinking whether that is genuine or not, whether it's really gonna work for your skin. Because studies have proved that anything between 30 to 50 SPF is good enough. And also the difference between 30 and 50 isn't massive. Like a lot of the times, I personally felt like I was more drawn towards buying 50 SPF because I felt like, oh, it's much higher than 30. But when you actually look at the statistics, it doesn't make that much of a difference. Okay, the next thing we come to is UVA protection and UVB protection. You will see this on your sunblock bottles. It will say UVA, UVB or both. So the UVB rays are basically the ones that cause sunburn and skin cancer. So uh, these are really harmful. Now coming to the UVA rays. Now this is why your dermatologist always tells you to wear sunblock every single day whether you're at home you're outside uh wherever you are I'm, I'm sure you've heard this where people say you should wear sunscreen every day irrespective of whether you're leaving the house or not because the uv areas are always present and they can actually even penetrate through glass so through a window you can actually have uv areas in your home as well these cause aging, dark spots, darkening, everything that you associate with sun damage. Okay, this is something most people don't know. There are two types of sunscreens. There are physical and chemical blockers, basically. Both these are totally different categories of sunscreen. We also do have a combination of both and sometimes you might find uh, a sunscreen with both mineral as well as chemical ingredients as well. So mineral formulas usually use physical blockers like zinc or titanium dioxide. These are usually the ingredients that you would uh, look up for on the boxes to indicate that this is a mineral formulation. And what they do is they usually filter or block the rays. They form like a barrier on your skin. And um, this is why you tend to have um, that white ashy look when you have a lot of mineral formulations, that's what you get uh, because it's kind of like a barrier on your skin. So chemical formulations are actually a mix of a number of chemicals that I cannot pronounce right now. Uh, but what they do is they kind of absorb the UV radiation and dissipate it. Uh, so it's kind of like when you have a ray hitting here, what it does is it spreads it so that it, you know, you don't feel uh, the harshness of it. That's usually what the chemical formulations do. With the mineral formulations, they absorb both UVA and UVB rays. With the chemical ones, they absorb the rays. So it kind of allows the UVA rays to go deeper into the skin, which is going to cause a lot of damage as well. The other problem with chemical formulations is that it can affect the hormonal balance in the skin, of course, cause a lot of um, irritation to the skin or breakouts or things like that um, if the chemicals don't agree with your skin. As I mentioned, there are also sunscreens that have both chemical and mineral properties. But if you have sensitive skin I would recommend sticking to a mineral one because it will cause less irritation and it's 
safe on the skin than the chemical ones. The next thing you will find on your bottles is the PA rating. Now you will see a PA rating with either 1 plus sign, 2 plus signs or 3 plus signs. What this actually means is the protection it offers from the UVA rays and the higher the number of pluses obviously the more protection you get. Another myth we're busting today is that there is no real waterproof or sweat proof sunblock yes uh, this is something even I used to look for and um, in a lot of countries again as I mentioned it's banned and you cannot write waterproof or sweat proof which is why they use terms like sport on the bottles instead of waterproof or sweat proof kind of advertise it as a sports category product again there is not enough research to show that it is waterproof or sweat proof so if you're in the sun for a long period of time make sure you reapply especially if you're going into the water and coming out you have to reapply. The next thing that was really alarming to me was that over 80% of people that actually use sunblock don't use enough. And I'm not talking about reapplying or you know um, things like that. I'm talking about the actual usage. So when we apply sunblock, we're not applying enough in that application. And the reason for that is because ingredients like zinc and titanium dioxide, which are common in sunscreens, they tend to be thicker and tend to feel heavier on the skin. So we feel like we have a lot of product on, but we actually don't. So um, that's something you've got to be conscious about. You really need to be, you know, putting a nice thick layer of sunscreen on especially if you're on the beach or like playing sports and you're in like the harsh sunlight then you definitely need to make sure that you have enough sunscreen on okay the last tip i'm gonna give you is do not do not do not under any circumstances use expired sunscreen of course we say this for most beauty products that don't use expired products and check you know, the dates on the products because everything has a shelf life but sunscreens have a lot of chemical components and what happens is the chemicals kind of react with each other and if it's beyond the date of usage what happens is sometimes they could react in an unexpected manner and that could obviously damage your skin and what happens is after a point they stop working as a barrier against the UVA and UVB rays so it's kind of like there's no point in putting it on if it's expired um, so definitely definitely do not use expired sunblock now I have certain sunscreens with me here uh, some which I've been using over the years some which I've you know got for this video to kind of help you guys understand what I mean with chemical sunblocks and uh, the physical blockers things like that so I'm gonna start with the chemical ones and some of these really really surprised me number one is the banana boat one which is what I've been loving and you guys know I've been using this a lot it's a spray on one and it has a really uh, nice you know thin um, texture it's not heavy at all so it's like a spray and it kind of comes on like in you know like a shiny oil and that's it now things that you want to keep in mind you can see that it says sport uh, it doesn't say waterproof or sweat proof because as I mentioned there aren't enough studies to support that any product has that it says sweat resistant water resistant the other thing you want to keep in mind is this term broad spectrum now broad spectrum is kind of where you know that there's uva and uvb protection also if they don't write uva and uvb the other thing you want to keep in mind is certain ingredients that um, are harmful i will put them here and i will also put them in the description now with chemical blockers there are certain chemicals which they say are harsher than the others and those are something that you want to look out for this one strangely has that which is oxybenzone which is supposed to be one of the stronger chemicals now it has worked for me honestly i have used this and i don't know if i'm going to stop using it because it has this i mean i feel more aware now that i know that it has it you don't really have all the ingredients on it because i'm guessing it was on the packaging which is another bad thing so when you kind of buy uh, your sunscreen make sure you check the packaging first because what happens is a lot of these like these 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 they don't really have the ingredients on um the the packaging like actually it had to go online to check whether you know they had chemicals in them or not because it's thrown away the boxes so you want to check the boxes before you buy your sunscreen for sure so this one clearly states contains oxybenzone that's the only thing it says which obviously means that the chemical is harsh so that's something you want to check on the labels for sure. Now this is a great example of a mineral sunblock because it has the UVA protection, UVB, it has PA with two signs and it clearly states all the ingredients and you can see that uh, titanium dioxide and zinc are popular uh, ingredients in this and you can see that there's no harsh chemicals. It's clearly a mineral sunscreen. The other one you have is this one which is the Clinique 
um, mineral sunscreen fluid for the face. It says in the name itself that it is a mineral based formulation. I like these kind of formulations because what happens is they're really thin. So even as I mentioned with the mineral ones that tend to be white and ashy, with something like this because it is a light formulation, it gets absorbed into the skin. Um, pretty easily as opposed to a lot of the cream formulations. Next up we have the Nivea one which is 50 plus SPF. It has UVA, UVB protection, water resistant, does not say waterproof because again that's something that is possibly not even something that exists. The other thing I want to draw your notice to is a lot of chemicals have multiple names. So now when you say oxy uh, benzone, it could possibly be known by a lot of other names as well and you would never know like this one is is very difficult for me to tell it doesn't have any of the the highlighted red alert bad chemicals but it has a lot of chemicals names that i would not know and it doesn't anywhere say whether this is a physical formulation or a chemical formulation so that's something that you want to do your research before you buy a sunscreen for sure now this is something i bought on the net for this video uh, i haven't tried it yet i haven't used it yet but again, as I said, it's not really clear on what it is. So you have to do your research before buying a product. Then we have one of my favorite sunblocks, which is the La Roche Posay one. Now, this is not the one that I usually use. I had Anthelios, which is um, a liquid formulation like the Clinique one, which I really, really like. It's a light formulation that is, again, UVA, UVB protection and 50 SPF, which I really, really like. Um, that is not as easily available in India and it is quite expensive. The other thing with mineral formulations is that they tend to be more expensive than the chemical ones. So um, that's something you need to be uh, aware of, which is why when you say, why is sunblock so expensive? It is because the mineral formulations cost more to make. Also, what happens is where companies try to get rid of the white ashy tone to make it more cosmetically appealing for people. So that makes it more expensive as well. So you have a lot of light mineral uh, based sunscreens which don't give you that white ashy tone but they're expensive and this is why. Now, the next one is something I used to use as a teenager, which is the Lotus Herbal Safe Sun UV Screen. Uh, now, of course, it's called a MAC gel. We had different versions when I was younger. But this again, you can see PA with three plus signs, SPF 50, UVA, UVB protection. I think if you're on a budget, this was a really, really good sunscreen and I really liked it when I was younger. I used a lot of this. So I think the biggest thing that I've learned through this process is that you need to read the labels before buying sunscreen. Like you need to look out for whether it has UVA protection, UVB protection, what the PA signs are on it, whether it's mineral based or it's chemical. Now there's no right or wrong. It's not that chemical based sunscreens are bad for you and that they don't work. They do work and a lot of people like them as well. Um, it's just what works better for your skin and a lot of people obviously prefer mineral based or natural based products as opposed to chemical formulations. You have to try a lot of sunscreens to kind of find the right one for you and after this video I kind of realized that even if it's thicker and greasier um, maybe that's better because that's giving you more protection and it's probably um, mineral based. There are lots of things you want to keep in mind and you've got to decide what sunscreen is good for you based on your needs and your exposure to the sun basically. How many hours are you in the sun for, uh, whether it's a beach day, whether it's a day at work, whether it's a day at home what kind of sunscreen do you need is the question you need to ask yourself so guys if you found this video give it a thumbs up and please comment below with some of your favorite sunscreens in the comments i would love to try those as well and if you still want me to do a top 10 sunscreens after this i can do that for you as well so leave your comments see you guys bye Mwah.